cheap versus expensive skates. What do we get when we pay more or less? Let's find that out. Hey guys, it's me, Jack of a French Land Skater. Quite a lot of people ask me what are the main differences between cheap and more expensive VLAN skates and if it's okay to choose the cheapest ones for beginners. So I started to respond to these questions by making a video where I showed the skates I suggest to people starting out that are right in the sweet spot between price, performance, durability and the possibility to be easily customized. And I really suggest you to watch that video before watching this one because it will be kinda related to that too. Now, to illustrate what we can get when we choose cheap skates and much expensive ones, I will compare the Oxello Fit Freeze, which are the cheapest skates I've managed to find, and the Seba Igor's 2K16, that are the most expensive skates I own. We'll first start by taking a look at these two skates and then we'll see how they perform, alright? We'll start with the Oxello Fit Freeze. These skates have a soft boot with a fixed liner with quite a soft shell. It has three locking mechanisms, laces, 45 degrees velcro strap and a top strap. It's nice because this is what we find on a lot of hard shell boots, but I wish we could have a stronger top buckle because it looks to be quite fragile. Plus, my laces were already damaged on my Oxellos. For the cuff, it's <laughs> very flexible. Now, there is something that surprised me with these skates. We actually have a V-cut in the back. That is amazing. The boot seems to be well ventilated and we even have a vent for the toes. But I have never seen a vent in that position before. And speaking about the toes, I don't know if it's me, but the front end of the skate seemed to be tilted up. Looks like it will make you have a weird position. I think it's just the exterior design that makes me think that. In the bottom part of the boot, we actually have some additional ventilation. Good! But I noticed that there is a little gap between the bottom of the boot and the shell. Hmm, doesn't seem good to me. Anyway, let's move down to the frames. So as you can see here, we have a non-removable frame that is made out of composite materials that doesn't seem to be very stiff and resistant. This also means that we won't have a super high power transfer. And when turning the skates around, we can see that two Allen keys are required to remove the wheels. That's not very convenient. In the back of the right foot, we actually have a removable brake. And what's amazing is that Oxello included the replacement bolts. That is very cool because there are other brands that don't do that. These skates are mounted with some 76mm wheels with a hardness of 78A. I think these are the softest wheels I've seen for the moment. I think that's it for these skates. Oh, this part, I'm a little concerned about the gap we have here for the power transfer and precision. But anyway, these skates have been made for beginners, people who don't skate too often, so that's why I managed to find all these flaws. Alright, now let's move over to the next pair, the Seba Igors. These skates have a semi-soft boot with a built-in liner and a multi-layer carbon fiber base. It's extremely stiff, they have been designed to stay very close to your feet and take their shape. And for this one we have 4 locking mechanisms, laces, toe strap, 45 degree micro ratchet buckle and another one on the top as well. And we can definitely see that these ones are much more durable compared to the Oxello ones. Anyway, once you tighten these skates, your feet are not gonna move, they'll be locked into place, they'll be much more precise. For the cuffs, we have some removable carbon fiber cuffs that are extremely stiff, sometimes too stiff for some people, but I got used to it. On the back, we have a nice V-cut that gives you more mobility, especially when doing tricks, although I wish it was deeper. Now for the ventilation, we have... We, we do not have ventilation. <laughs> These skates have some abrasive pads to prevent you from destroying them prematurely. We have them on the toe and on the side. And bonus being that the one on the side can be removed and replaced with another one or with another color. 
Now let's move to the frames. Forget the plastic. Here we have some super stiff frames made of strong aluminum. And the great part is that you can tune its position under your feet and even have the possibility to remove them completely and replace them with another frame thanks to all these mounting slots. The Eagles come with special frames. These frames are pre rocket They have a full rocket setup. I've made a video explaining what a full rocket setup is, but basically it's when you have the front and back wheels smaller than the ones in the middle. This gives you better maneuverability, but reduces stability. Now with these frames, you don't have to find wheels on a different size in order to have a full rocker. These frames do the effect for you. Oh, and another cool thing about this frame is that you only need one Allen key to remove the wheels. Okay, now for the wheels and bearings, I've put some gyro F2R wheels that have a harness of 85A, which is harder compared to the Xello ones, but we can find even harder wheels in SketchUps. And for the bearings, I'm using some Seba rustproof bearings, and these started to become my favorite bearings actually. Alright, this is it for the specs comparison between these two skates. Now it's time to use them, and I'm gonna give a chance to the Oxello ones since these skates have a different setup. The Oxellos have a flat setup compared to the Eagles who have a full rocker setup. So I'll put the Oxellos in a full rocker. Now first, let's remove the brakes with the two Allen keys provided with these skates. Alright, so I'm having a problem to put the last wheel uh, inside uh, of these skates and <laughs> the problem is because these two axles don't want to um, to, to get um, centered, like they are offset if I can show this. Like even if I try with uh, my bare hands, let me try to close it and as you can see it's off-centered, it's so weird. Like, it's tilted, and you can even see this clearly. And how how did they manage to do that? Like, I tried a few times, and it's like, every time I try, it doesn't want to uh, stay good. Like, it's always off-centered. Like, I cannot close it more than that. And I want to skate this wheel. I want to skate with this skate. Oh, I can't not open it anymore. Let me. Uh. All right, secured. Good. Uh. Bad design, guys, or bad milling? I don't know. There's something wrong at least. <laughs> These are my very first frames from Seba, the X-Series frames, and as you can see, they also need two Allen keys to have access to the wheels, and the entire action is smooth. So I really think it's a uh, milling uh, issue they had with Oxello. I guess it can happen. Mm, okay, I'll make part 2 of this test once these skates will be operational, so don't forget to subscribe to see part 2 of this video. Also, please help me make an getting more popular by sharing this video to your friends. You can change everything. Think about it. Alright guys, see you in the next episode.